for it, buddy. I'm back. Everybody, Tina Young is back, and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. I am so excited today because today at the Young's house, Jeannie Young is going to share with you all how easy it is to make delicious spaghetti and meatballs. This recipe is delicious. It's so easy to make. It doesn't require a lot of ingredients and you know, make it Jeannie Young style. It's going to be so tasty. Y'all never had my spaghetti and meatballs before. You better make you some. Here are the lovely ingredients you're gonna need. Of course, you're gonna need some ground meat. Now today, I'm gonna use 80-20 ground beef. I'm using two pounds. So that's what we have right here. All right, and you will also need some fresh veggies. Right here, we have two garlic cloves, and you can see that we have some beautiful tri-colored bell peppers. You will need a nice onion. This is a sweet Vidalia onion. We have an egg that we will be using and I have some uh, mushrooms as well. You will need some breadcrumbs. Now you can use any kind of breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs that I'll be using today is Italian style pinko breadcrumbs. Of course you're going to need some spaghetti when we have spaghetti and meatballs here at the Young's house. We like to use the thin spaghetti so we're going to use that and also you're going to need some great sauce. Now you can make your own sauce but I like to bump up my sauce so right here we have the Prego it's garden style and it's chunky it's filled with veggies you will need some parsley and then also you're gonna need a couple of spices so that we can spice everything up so right here I have some sugar that we will be using in our sauce we have Italian seasoning garlic and onion powder we have parsley flakes pepper we have some sea salt, and you cannot have spaghetti without Parmesan cheese. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this really quick and simple, yet so tasty recipe. Okay, everyone, so one of the first things that we want to start doing is I want to start chopping up some veggies and we're going to make this lovely sauce. We want to get our sauce started so that it can simmer down and get nice and gorgeous. So now let's start off with our garlic and our onions. We are going to chop them down and I like to use the side of my knife just to give it a nice whack. What happens when you do that Gina? Well, a couple of things happen. The skin comes off very easily, otherwise you're going to be peeling for days trying to get the skin off, okay? So that's what happens when we give it a nice whack. The skin comes off easily. And also, it kind of breaks the garlic down a little bit to assist you in the chopping process. You see how it mashes it a little bit? So now what I want to do right away is I want to chop up this beautiful garlic. Garlic is a must when you're starting a tomato sauce. Whether you're starting your tomato sauce from scratch or if you just want to bump up the spaghetti sauce that you're using like I'm gonna do today. Chop it up in small pieces. You can do slices however you like. I'm gonna chop mine down pretty small because no one wants to bite down into a huge piece of garlic. I'm gonna continue to chop this up and I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, let's attack this onion in hopes that I don't go crying. Anytime I chop onions, I'm telling you, like, they just make me cry. And we're going to pray that that doesn't happen in this video. I normally have to go on pause, tell you guys I'll be back so that I can fix my eyes because onions make me cry. All right, so we're going to chop this up nice and fine if you want yours you know, bigger pieces, absolutely, that's okay. I'm gonna use half of, the, of an onion, just like so. We're gonna chop it down, and then we wanna get the onion and the garlic into olive oil. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a onion and garlic infused oil that is really gonna permeate all through our sauce and create great flavor. Those of you that are familiar with me, you know that I love to make a nice garlic oil for my tomato sauce. It really gives you a great flavor. We're gonna be able to achieve that by doing this. So what we're gonna do now is let's take some olive oil. And you know, to be honest, if you don't have olive oil, it's okay. Use some vegetable oil. We're gonna take this and put it into our pan and we want to salt, not too much, but enough so we can have that onion and garlic infused oil. 
So we're gonna take our garlic, get it right into the pan, just like so. And we wanna cook our garlic until it gets nice, beautiful, and golden brown, along with the onions. Once it starts to get sauteed up, I'll be back and I'll show you what we'll do next. Okay, everyone, while our garlic and onions saute up, let's start to chop up these beautiful veggies that we have here. Uh, to be honest, when we talk about bell peppers, each bell pepper has different flavors. And I love the color that it gives, and I also love the flavor that each bell pepper gives off. So that's my purpose for using the different colored bell peppers. Now, you can just use green bell pepper if you like, or whatever bell pepper that you love. Okay, you can see how I'm going to chop up these veggies, just like so, not too big and not too small. Okay, and we're gonna get those in next with this garlic and onions that we have cooking in the olive oil. Okay, everyone, so we have our bell peppers nice and cut up, all the same size. You wanna cut them up the same size so that they all can cook around about the same time. Now, I'm putting them in with the onion and the garlic infused oil just like so, and you see that I didn't use the whole bell peppers. The rest of the bell peppers, I just threw them in a freezer bag so we can use them, um, you know, on a later day. Let's talk about the mushrooms. Some of you love them, some of you hate them. Here at the Young's House, we love them. And anytime I get a chance to throw veggies into a dish, I'm gonna. We love mushrooms. So now, when you bring your mushrooms home, make sure you wash them, okay? And you don't wanna soak these in water. You wanna take a damp paper towel or a brand new toothbrush and you just kinda brush off the dirt, okay? Because if you soak these in water, they are like a sponge. They will just soak up that water and they'll be disgusting. Okay, so now that we've washed them off, we wanna cut off the stems. You can always save the stems if you like. Um, and we wanna give these a nice chop down. I'm not gonna use all of these. I just want some flavor of the mushrooms in our sauce. So this is how we're gonna chop them, just like so. Once I get a couple of them chopped, we'll throw them right in with our veggies, our garlic and onions. Okay, everyone, now that our veggies have started to saute down in that beautiful um, olive oil, now it's time to put in these gorgeous mushrooms. Not too many, but just enough to really flavor up your sauce. Okay, so we're gonna get those in just like so, and I wanna take this time to open up my sauce. All right, who doesn't love Prego? I love it. All right, but sometimes I will get the off-brand names of the spaghetti sauce and really bump it up and it tastes just as good. All right, so we're gonna get this in there just like so. And I will push it, uh, put a little bit of water in here to get the excess tomato sauce out of the jar. You all know how to do it. You put some water in there, put the lid on, shake that bad boy up and get all of this excess out. Okay, so we're gonna use two jars of our tomato sauce. We're gonna let this simmer down while we make up our beautiful meatballs. The meatballs are so easy to make, and listen here, the taste is out of sight. So let's let this simmer. When I come back, I'll show you how to make really quick and simple, yet so tasty meatballs. Okay, everyone, before we make the meatballs, we do wanna season up our spaghetti sauce. Here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna take some Italian seasoning. Now I like to use Italian seasoning. Sometimes you'll see me even use a bay leaf. I'm not gonna use bay leaves today because when I use the Italian seasoning, you don't always need a bay leaf, all right? So we're gonna put some in here, just like so. Not too much, but a nice amount that you can taste, all right? We're gonna put some onion powder. It definitely needs it garlic powder, a little bit of salt, okay, and black pepper, definite, all right? And then we're gonna take just a little pinch of sugar. Don't worry, I know some of you out there are gonna say, no, Gina, don't do it, I have to. Now the sugar, what it's gonna do is it's really gonna cut some of the acid and it's going to prevent some of you that get heartburn from that tomato sauce, it's gonna cut it a little bit. Okay, everyone, so we're here at the larger stove, and I want to make 
our thin spaghetti noodles. So I'm gonna take about a pound and a half of the noodles and literally I'm just gonna hold them and let them fall how they may. Now in this recipe today I will be using vegetable oil or olive oil. Okay so what we want to do we're using the oil today because I don't want my noodles to stick together. When you put your noodles into the boiling water you want to give them a nice stir around so that they don't stick. They're only going to take 11 minutes to get perfectly al dente. Okay everyone, now that we have our sauce simmering, we have our noodles cooking, let's make these meatballs, they're so easy. We're gonna take some panko breadcrumbs or any kind of breadcrumbs you have, get them in there, okay? Not as a filler, but kind of to hold the uh, meatballs together, but you don't wanna use too much, all right? So then we're gonna take a little bit of milk. I didn't mention milk, but anytime I make meatballs, I make meatloaf, I use the milk to soften up the meatball and also to soften up those breadcrumbs not too much all right and then i want to take this time to chop up some fresh parsley okay so we're going to do that just like so in this manner you don't need a lot but you definitely need fresh parsley for your meatballs okay so now that we have this nice and chopped up we'll get out our spices beautiful so we're gonna go in a little bit of Italian seasoning. Once again, onion powder, garlic powder. We're gonna put an egg in. This is just a large egg, all right? Parmesan cheese, it's needed for your meatballs. Okay, not too much salt because the Parmesan cheese does have salt in it. In we go with some black pepper. Get that black pepper in there. A little bit of sea salt. All right, and we're gonna mix when I come back. Okay, everyone, so I wanted to wash up my arms, take off my jewelry, and wash my hands very well. I feel like when you're making meatballs, you're making meatloaf loaf, go in with your hands. Sometimes it's better than utensils. Okay, so I'm just gonna go right in, and I wanna mix everything up just like so in this manner, and you don't wanna handle it too much. Handling your meatballs can cause you to have tough meatballs. We don't want that. Once everything gets nice and mixed up, I'm gonna come back and show you what size to make your meatballs. Okay, everyone, now that we have our mixture nice and mixed up, if you kind of toss them this way and they don't fall apart, guess what? You have the right texture. You don't any, need any more uh, breadcrumbs, okay? The breadcrumbs and the egg will help it to stick together. Now you want to see, what size do I want my meatballs? You can make them tiny and you can make them huge. I kind of like to make mine's medium size. And when I make a bowl, I usually put about four or five on each person's bowl. Okay, this size. You wanna to try to make them all the same size and that way they all get done at the same size. Oh, I'm sorry, at the same time. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can fry them in a pan, okay? We're not gonna do that today. You can just take these bad boys and you can throw them in the sauce raw and really cook your sauce down until your meatballs are done. We're not gonna do that today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put these in the oven. When I come back, We'll put them in the oven. I'll let you know how long they took to cook. Okay, everyone, here's what our beautiful meatballs look like. We had a little overflow, so I have this pan. They're going in the oven, 350 degrees. And when I come back, we're gonna drain those noodles. Okay, everyone, we are here at the sink. I wanna drain my noodles. And what I will do is I wanna rinse my noodles. There's a lot of steam. I'm gonna rinse my noodles with cold water. Okay, everyone, so our meatballs have came out of the oven. They took 30 minutes to cook. You don't even have to turn them over, okay? So here's what they look like. They are so beautiful. And right here, you can see that I have cut one of them, okay? Oh my goodness, here's what the inside looks like. Beautiful, and they're nice and done in the inside. This piece right here is for me. I have to try it. Oh. Oh, <laughs> mm. 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 now what we're going to do, time to take the meatballs, get them into your sauce. Okay, so we're going to do just that. We're going to take each meatball, put it into this gorgeous sauce that we've had simmering. 
just like so. And when I come back, I'll show you what we'll do next. Beautiful. Okay, so let's talk about the meatball overload. When I make meatballs here at the Young's house, we don't wanna be stingy. That's why I always like to use two pounds. Two pounds is gonna give you a nice amount of meatballs. Check it out. Okay, so we're gonna start to push these meatballs gently down into the sauce and let it simmer with the sauce. And then next, what I wanna do is I wanna take some garlic bread. You can't have spaghetti without garlic bread. Get you some garlic knots, some garlic sticks, garlic bread, and I always buy it frozen. You know, it tastes delicious. You can make it yourself, but you know, it's really up to your discretion. We're gonna get these in the oven until they get nice and warm, and when I come back, I'll show you what we'll do next. Okay, everybody, take a look. Spaghetti and meatballs, Gina Young style, make you some. Listen here, everybody. If you all enjoyed this here video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Gina Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends and everybody you know, tell the whole world about Gina Young and what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. We're gonna say a really quick prayer and you all are gonna get that first bite. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for another beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for your love time, your mercy, and your understanding. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. Send your angels down to surround us day and night. Your Holy Spirit to help us make good decisions. Give us peace over our mind in the name of Jesus. We pray that no weapons formed against us shall prosper in the name of Jesus, and we bind the devil away from us in Jesus' name. Devil, you have no authority over this household. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the roof over our head, the food, the love, the peace and the joy that you bring us every day. We thank you for that. Amen. Amen. Once again to my beautiful prayer, let's dive in. I can't wait any longer. I can't wait. Parmesan, get you some. Listen, everybody make you some of this Gina Young style, you will not be let down. Your family and friends are gonna go nuts over this simple recipe. Let's go in. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, we wanna try that sauce and the noodles first, and then we will try those meatballs. <laughs> My mouth is salivating. Take a bite, let me know what you think. Ah, <laughs> oh, just beautiful. So simple, so tasty. Man, it's so good. It's like taste bud overload. You hear me? And the meatballs were so simple. Take a bite. I'm going in. Mmm, mommy. <laughs> and as always, God bless you all. Thank you all for watching. Good night.